Hello and thank you for clicking uh, on our video. Uh, so today I'm going to present you Joint Walk with Corentin Jeudi, Adeline Roulonglois and Bei Chang Wen. And oops, before I start with uh, giving our contribution, I would like to give you the context of our contribution. So we uh, contribute to the theoretical understanding of the hardness assumptions that underlie cryptography based on structured lattices. So when I say this, I mean that we are actually not really doing cryptography today. So I'm not showing you any uh, construction, but I will give you some theoretical reductions to um, deepen our understanding. So our main result can be summarized in the following statement. We show a classical reduction from a worst case lattice problem to the module learning with virus problem with a small modulus and a linear rank. So when I say classical, I mean that the reduction is not quantum. And the worst case lattice uh, problem I'm talking about is the approximate gap shortest factor problem in module lattices. And the module learning of errors problem um, has an underlying ring of degree n, and this will be our asymptotic parameter throughout the presentation. So when I say a small modulus, I mean that the modulus can be polynomially small in the ring degree, and the rank is also linear in this ring degree. Okay, so this will be the outline of the talk. I will recap some notions about uh, module lattice problems, then I will give some motivation of our result and some more technical details before I um, conclude with some open questions. So let's start. Um, so the first thing is that um, we need the shortest vector problem. So for any lattice, which is a discrete additive subgroup of the Euclidean space, we can associate a minimum um, which is the smallest norm of a non-zero vector in the lattice. And we can define the approximate gap shortest vector problem for an approximation factor gamma and a lattice lambda and some positive parameter delta. So the task is to distinguish whether the minimum is smaller than delta or larger than gamma times delta. And if the minimum lies in between delta and gamma delta, any answer is correct. And you can already see here that if the approximation factor becomes larger, then the problem becomes easier. And as we like to draw uh, pictures in dimension two, uh, here we have a lattice of dimension two with, um, generated by two vectors, b1, b2. And the minimum, in this case, it happens, um, this is the norm of b1. So I can give you a first delta one, which is the circle of radius blue, and you can answer me directly that the minimum is smaller than delta 1. And I can give you a second circle in orange of radius delta 2, and you can answer directly that this, um, in this case the minimum is even larger than twice this delta 2. Okay, and what we really need in this talk today is um, the gap shortest vector problem over module lattices. So, let k be a number field of degree n and r its ring of integers. So if you're not familiar with, all, with um, number theoretic notions, you can think of k as the field of polynomials with rational coefficients modulo x to the n plus 1, and r as the uh, ring of polynomials with integer coefficients modulo x to the n plus 1. And every number field has something that we call a canonical embedding, that is uh, defining a field homomorphism from K to the Euclidean space. And this canonical embedding is equipped with some special symmetries. And then any module over R of rank D defines a module lattice via this canonical embedding um, in, dimension, in, in the Euclidean space of dimension Dn. And every ideal, which is a module of rank 1, defines an ideal lattice. Um, of dimension n in our, our Euclidean space. And if I lost you now a bit, um, what I really would like you to take away is that not every uh, lattice in R2DND is a module lattice. So those are somehow special lattices. 
And then we can define the mod gap shortest, uh, the, the approximate gap shortest vector problem over module lattices by simply replacing the general lattice by module lattice in the definition. So again, the ask, uh, task is to decide whether the minimum is smaller than delta or larger than gamma times delta for an approximation factor. Okay, so that was the first lattice problem, now the second. Um, so the learning of first problem may be familiar to you, but I will still recap the definition. So we set the uh, quotient ring set Q as set modulo Q set, and we the LWE problem is given by some matrix A, which is sampled uniformly at random, and a vector B, which is of dimension M, and is given by A times S plus E, where S is a secret uh, vector of dimension D, and E a vector of uh, dimension M, but of small norm. So you can think of a Gaussian. And the search variant of the learning with errors problem asks you to find the secret S, and the decision version asks you to distinguish whether A, B comes from this learning with error sample, or if B is sampled from uniform. Uh, from the uniform distribution. So there are two things I would like to re... No, um, nothing here. So this is the learning of errors problem. And as I already said, uh, we are interested in the version and the variant over modules. So again, we go to the number theoretic uh, framework. So we simply replace the ring of integers by the ring of integers of some number field. And we set the quotient ring RQ to be R modulo QR. So we will have the same picture, uh, where now the matrix A is sampled uniformly at random over RQ, with M the number of rows and D the rank, the number of columns. And um, so the first thing I would like to remark is that for D equals one, um, this is a special case that we call the ring LWE problem. And the second thing I would like to remark that is the matrix I somehow hides some structure. So every element in this matrix A, let's say A11, the first entry, um, defines a structured matrix in set Q, where N is the ring degree. And uh, so we should not forget this. Um, but for the rest of this talk, um, this does not play uh, an important role. So now we had the two lattice problems, and I would like to continue with motivating our um, results. So um, what we know for LWE is that Rek have introduced a quantum reduction going from the approximate gap shortest vector problem to the LWE problem, um, where the modulus can be small. And Pike had gave a classical reduction um, where the LWE modulus um, has to be large. And uh, Prokersky, Longlois, Pike, Dregev, and um, Stelet uh, merged or took the positive of both results to give a classic reduction where the modulus can also be small. So the situation is a slightly different uh, one for module LWE. So Longlois and Stelet gave a quantum reduction um, where the modulus can be small and any rank. And it was folklore that it should be possible to adapt Pikett's proof for a module a learning with error problem um, with the expense of having a large modulus and only to the search variant as there is no search decision reduction for exponentially large modulus for module LWE. And now comes our work. So we thought that why could, could we not do the same as for LWE? So we somehow take the positive of both and we show a classical reduction for a small modulus and we go down to the decisional variant but um, with the expense of needing a linear rank. And why do we care? Um, <laughs> so as you maybe uh, have already heard there is a NIST standardization process going on. So the crypto community uh, puts uh, makes a lot of effort to standardize um, possible post-quantum schemes and um, within this uh, third round candidates multiple ones are based on a module LWE problem and variance. So there's Kyber and Dilithium 
But there's also Sable, which is using a deterministic variant of the module learning with Earth's problem. And to be honest, uh, those, um, those schemes, in order to maximize efficiency, they have ranks which lie rather between two and five. <laughs> so they are much smaller than the ring degree n, which is more around a thousand or 500. And so our result doesn't, does not have um, direct practical impact on those schemes. And um, yeah, so let's move on to the technical details. So here um, I wanted to recall this statement at the beginning. So I showed you now what the worst case lattice problem is. And I also recapped the module learning with errors problem. And now I would like to show you how we managed to do this classical reduction for small modulus. Okay, so in fact, we're following the high-level idea of the LWE analog of Brackett, uh, Prokersky, Longlois, Pikett, um, Rekev, and Stelle from 2000, 2013. So we have three steps. Um, so the first step is that we have a classical reduction um, from the gap shortest vector problem over module lattices down to the decisional version with the expense of having an exponentially large modulus. So in fact, what we do is take the proof of Pikert, which gives us a classical reduction, and then use also a more recent result from uh, Pikert, Regev, and Steven Davidovitz, where we can do go down directly to the decisional version. And um, then we continue with step two, which is a hardness reduction for module LWE with a binary circuit. So this is an interesting problem on its own. Um, so what we do is we take the one of the first results into this direction for LWE and um, use a more intelligent noise fluting to make the parameters much better than the original one, but to prove much simpler than the BLPRS paper. Whoops. And, and then there's the last step where we need to shrink the modulus because now it's exponentially large, but for practical schemes, we need polynomially large modulus. And, um, and here, in fact, um, we need this binary secret hardness because the loss in the reduction depends on the norm of the secret. And by taking a binary secret, we minimize the loss in the reduction. And today we are going only to focus on step two um, so the step two is the hardness of the binary module LWE problem. So let's start with a sample A, A times S plus E, where the secret S is binary. So taken over R mod 2R and of dimension D. And we want to show that this is, um, it, it is hard to find a secret S. So the first step that we do is we, to, uh, we do something that people call the lossy argument. So we replace the matrix A by some multiple secrets module LWE sample. So A becomes B times C plus Z. And um, then A times S plus E becomes B times C plus uh, times S here, plus Z times S plus E. And here you already see that this argument does not work if the dimension of, so if the number of columns of A is too small. So somehow we need to hide a, a thinner matrix B, but if we already have only one column, we cannot make it thinner, we cannot uh, hide something. The second step is that we argue that due to the leftover hash lemma, C times S can be replaced by S prime, where S prime is uniformly uh, is an element in RQ. And in order to apply the leftover hash lemma, the rank D has to be larger than L log Q. So you can see even if I take L equals one here, then the rank has to be at least logarithmic in Q. And as you remember, so in this big picture, Q was exponentially large. So here you can see that the rank has to be large, has to be linear in fact. Okay. And then the third uh, key ingredient is uh, noise fluting. So we want to argue that um, having Z times S plus E 
and here e prime, where e and e prime following the same are following the same distribution, um, that those two distributions are indistinguishable for an adversary. And what we end up with here is a sample of the module LWE problem with uniform sequence. So if it's hard to find this S prime here, and we show that uh, those um, distributions are close enough, then uh, and we assume the hardness of mo mm, module LWE with multiple secrets, then the module LWE with a binary secret is also hard to solve. Okay, so let's focus on the noise fluting. So um, in the original paper from GKPV, um, they use um, the statistical distance in order to measure how far away two probability distributions are. And in our work, we take an alternative measure, which is the Rainy divergence. And um, I gave you the definitions um, of those probability measures. But um, I guess for you, it's just important that they are just two different ways of calculate how far uh, two probability distributions are away from each other is a bit like taking two different norms in uh, one Euclidean space. And um, so if you take, for ex example, two Gaussians of with beta and one is shifted by some vector s, the Raine divergence is given by this value and statistical distance is given by this value. And there is an important difference of those two measures. So um, both fulfill the probability preservation property for an event E. And this means that, um, that the probability this event happens for the probability distribution Q uh, bound, uh, bounds above the probability that it happens for the distribution P with uh, the, the <laughs> difference of having the statistical distance. So here you can see that here it's an additive factor and in the Raine divergence this uh, property becomes a multiplicative factor. If you can ensure that QE is negligible then you can make sure that PE is negligible. Mm. And um, so in order to make this direction of implications um, you need to require that the statistical distance is negligible and you need to require that the Raine divergence is constant. Uh, so you see, it, this is much better. So constant is much easier to have than negligible. And we can see this in our concrete example. So if we have the two Gaussians, d, be uh, d beta and d beta shifted by s, and we assume that the norm of s is bounded by alpha, you can see for the dis statistical distance that we need um, alpha over q uh, beta, so the ratio of the two to be negligible. But in the Raine divergence, we only need the ratio to be constant by using an argument with a Taylor expansion at zero. And so we can have much better um, parameters. And one caveat is that the Raine divergence only works for search problems. This is why we do it for the search variance and do a search decision reduction at the end. Okay, so this was the high level, step one, step two, th step three. Today we only saw step two. But if you're interested in step one and step three, I invite you to look at the paper. And I finish with some open questions. So the first remark is that there's a lot of work going on right now, on um, which is somehow related, where the secret is taken from a small secret distribution. Uh, not necessarily binary, but maybe bounded norm, small bounded norm, uh, just referred to entropic LWE, there's work on entropic module LWE and ring LWE going on as well. And there is some work in progress on um, our side where we try to refine the proof of hardness for binary module LWE and make it independent of the number of samples. And there are some big open questions that remain that we could not answer where, like um, what about the classical hardness and the hardness of binary secret for smaller ranks and in particular for rank equals one. So the ring LWE problem. And maybe a first um, step would be to generalize some of our results that are restricted to specific number fields and make them um, valid for also more general uh, sets of number fields.
So this is the end of my talk and I thank you for listening and hope to see you at Asia Crypt uh, online. Mm -hmm.